presents The Realty Debate, powered by Reliance Home Finance with Manisha Natarajan. Welcome back. So often we've traveled abroad and visited a home of a friend or a family member and really wondered why do their flats, apartments, homes and buildings always look so much better than in India? How come they don't have chunks of plaster falling, walls with seepage showing and paint peeling? While these are, you know, interior things, we do know that there are a lot of exterior structural nuances which also go into making a home durable. There's also a big problem of project delays. Why is it that we are never able to deliver in time? I mean, a six months to a year delay is taken as a norm and not an exception in India. Is it that we are not using the right construction material, technology, methodology? What is it that we just aren't getting right? Beyond building permits, I mean, I know approval delays are a problem, but let's put that aside. Why is it that we are not being able to match the timelines followed in, let's say, a Dubai or a Singapore? Joining me today for India's Construction Technology and Practices, Anil Soni, Associate Dean Director and Professor, School of Construction, Ricks School of Built Environment. Also with me, Sanjay Kumar Vashne, Executive Director, Signature Global. Kalhan Mattu, Director, Planet 3 Studios Architecture Private Limited. Mohit Arora, Managing Director of Supertech Limited. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. You know, I think let's start with the structure per se. And, and I think, Ms. Sonny, you need to go first because at Rix, I think there's a lot of, uh, let's say, knowledge which resides in the structure itself. What is it that's missing? And why is it that we we lag in the time uh, time of delivery? I think the key issue that we need to understand is that it's about a holistic view of mm -hmm. the technology and how it, it interfaces with our projects. Okay. If you look at the exterior envelope, there are many technologies. There's really nothing new under the sun now. Mm -hmm. There are many technologies that can be adopted, but we do not really innovate do not look at and evaluate technologies carefully okay. and then embrace them in our projects. We just look at first cost and assume that if the first cost is slightly higher, it puts us as a disadvantage uh, on our projects. But that's really not the case. If you can gain speed, if you can gain quality, if you can gain on a little bit on other aspects, including sustainability and safety during uh, the construction work, I think it's definitely a plus. Time has come for us to stay away from sticks and bricks approach, which I call the traditional methods of mm. construction. Sticks, Some and? sticks and bricks. Sticks and bricks. So okay. I think if we can look at modern methods of technology, modern, modern methods of construction, there are many of them. Different projects will definitely need different technologies. Okay. So you're saying so, that we still we, we still haven't adopted. We're looking at the first cost rather than what is what is essential to deliver a project in a speedy manner and in a really really strong manner. Okay, Kalan Matu, would you would you agree with that premise that that we are way behind, let's say, a Dubai or a Singapore when it comes to construction technology and practices? No, absolutely. It's only now that we are talking about performance of buildings, and when it talk, when the conversation comes to comparing uh, capital expenditure with operating expenditure, uh, you know, capital expenditure always takes the you know uh, the precedence. So, uh, so I think I think it's about uh, our lack of understanding that a building is not merely the initial cost input into it. It's a it's a it's a system that you create which lasts a certain period of time, and there are certain costs associated with it, and uh, and human lives are associated with it. So I think that kind of refinement of understanding has yet to really come to us. Mohit Arora, I think you're the, you're the sole person who's going to defend the industry <laughs> along with your colleague here. But he's, he's just become a developer. So I think your experience is much, much more than Sanjay's. Go ahead, tell us. I mean, is it true that, that this, uh, the capital expenditure, if it's heavy at the beginning, the, the industry does not have the pocket to absorb those costs right now? And the vision is very short term. Exactly, that's the problem here that uh, we do not uh, see through the whole uh, through through the pro whole project plan. And even if we see the the initial cost or the capital cost is so high that we tend to ignore it and we tend to go towards the conventional methods of construction. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, there are new technologies and we as a company are uh, on an on, on ongoing basis, we are getting into those new technologies. But these technologies need a very huge uh, 
capital infusion in the in the beginning of the project or when we start uh, the uh, the this technology mm -hmm. itself like uh, we got into precast technology which right. is the probably the fastest way to build homes these days but that precast to build those precast panels it need, needs a very large setup of factory which of, and and setting up a uh, factory runs into crores and uh, it the factory itself becomes a profit center mm -hmm. so there's a there's a need of yes there is a need of uh, getting into new technology now to uh, to uh, come over this whole situation or the whole delays and the whole uh, uh, okay. Less quality situation. But you're but saying yes, capital is a challenge. Capital is a definitely capital a challenge. Capital is a challenge here. Yes. Okay, okay, Sanjay, you've you've just adopted. I mean, you've got into uh, your first project, and what's your experience been? I mean, have you invested? You're getting into an affordable segment yeah, where yeah. speed is of essence, right? If you if you don't if you miss the delivery deadline, I'm sorry, but your margins will disappear. So how are you going to meet that challenge? We are going for the aluminium framework. Actually, it's uh, the aluminium forward. The standard no name in the market is a Maiwan Shutting. Maiwan Shutting. Maiwan is yes, a basically a, uh, this uh, Malaysian company, mm -hmm. and uh, we go on as a, a Maiwan Shutting. So by using uh, this Maiwan Shutting, basically we are reducing the time. Okay. Almost half. The slab cycle generally 15 days. We come to be a seven days. By using a Maiwan Shutting, there is an integral construction of the wall, column. Uh, okay, so everything. you are saying that you are doing the my one. Is there anything else that you are following? Uh, no, I just want to come up with the my one technology or what's uh, this uh, aluminum framework. We are constructing an integrated construction. So the points you take, there is a CPs, a leakage and durability issues. When we construct by the using a my one shuttering, the, all these issues has been eliminated. Because you get a bilkul smooth surface, uh, construction as a homogeneous construction. So basically the structure is more durable. Okay. And in terms of that, we reduce the time line, uh, time also. All right. Okay. Uh, so so let's d uh, let's dwell on these two. So mm -hmm. Mohit Arora has mentioned precast technology. What does it do? Let me just tell you. Less labor intensive. More than seventy percent of the part can be constructed at the precast fabrication unit, and only thirty percent has to be carried out on the actual construction site. Though to set up a factory of precast not only do you need to consume it you also need an open market to consume it and that's also remained a big challenge there are lots of precast factories now but is there enough demand for that so it's supposed to be faster it also supposed to be co more cost effective and less labor intensive now sanjay mentioned mevan technology aluminium wall form work form. so reduces the turnaround time by almost half as compared to conventional technologies and eliminates the labor intensive activities like masonry rendering and provides more seismic resistance to the structure is that enough uh, kalan matu i mean these these two seem to be the two things which the industry really has adopted but but this just seems to me as a very strong small part of what could be done manisha this is exactly the problem we are so limited by the r and d done by a couple of companies that we are we are limiting our ambitions in terms of housing to to the technologies that they have produced but that's not the way what we need to do really is uh, that the industry as such not just the industry bodies but actually the individual developers need to invest in research and development they need to partner with design firms they need to partner with uh, with engineering firms they need to create these cells that actually push the envelope further when it comes to new thinking in terms of construction and that we 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 lag so way behind in terms of uh, in terms of construction uh, technologies that you know uh, some things that have happened in west 50 years back seem to be new to us right now which is incredible i think uh, i think uh, but i look at it positively i think partnering with designers for research and development there's no capital right now to even buy off the shelf technology and put it here so anil sorry i'm going to come to you i think it's a very valid capital. question also <clears throat> pardon me that capital has always been a challenge it's a, it seems to me like it's a very chicken in the next situation i don't think developers uh, not i can't talk for everybody but i don't think the industry wouldn't want to bring in technology which can actually uh, help them execute faster and and in a better way labor shortage has become such a big problem today anything which cuts down labor usage would be a big welcome move but capital do you agree that capital is a big challenge or do you think it's an overblown excuse by developers 
I think it's a mix of both. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look at it, uh, many studies have shown this. The traditional methods of construction, there's about 30% waste on construction sites. I'm not talking about just material waste. These right. are wastes in people and processes. Rework, you mentioned poor quality. Primarily poor quality stems from rework. We change design, we change things in between. So it causes a uh -huh. lot of uh, rework issues, quality issues. Mm -hmm. So I think again, as Mohit said, we need to look back and see in a holistic way in the entire project plan, where does technology fit and not limit ourselves to just precast, prefab technologies. There are many technologies. Broadly, there are two categories. Mm -hmm. See, you can do improvements with the help of innovation and technology in situ, meaning on site. Mm -hmm. There are definitely better formwork systems available. There are better designs available. Actually, design intervention can help a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think in situ improvements can be done if you want to go just for on-site technologies. But I believe off-site technologies are the real technologies that will help. Why do we need to build filler walls brick by brick with poor quality? Why can't we get cheaper, lighter, better quality wall panels and just put them in place? Obviously, it's not Mohit, that simple. Why can't we? Why don't you? No, we can. We can. We definitely can do these things. And as the only only uh, obstacle which comes in between is is capital, as we just we were just but talking about. But he's saying it's cheaper. Yeah, definitely it, it's 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 cheaper. But to uh, get into such a technology, we definitely need some capital. Brick by brick, it goes on a pace, and it matches the cash flows actually. Ah, and, uh, now we've come to yes. the basic thing because you know, as, so far the industry has been used to getting the money other than land for everything else the money has to come from the customer but now that the dynamics are changing and here's my question then uh, again I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put a builder under the scanner here we, uh, it's not fair to actually but but Anil if you were to answer this question now most uh, looking at the delays and getting tired of the quality which is delivered uh, a lot of buyers want to go in for a ready product do you think the times just right for the entire industry to now look at it and more and more they have to move into the affordable segment that this is the turning point where the industry should be looking very closely at getting technology savvy I mean, i'll make two points point one is that business as usual is not helping anyone not mm -hmm. even the end user not the developers unfortunately i, I don't know if mohit agrees but means delaying projects and not delivering is definitely a problem for all players in the industry. Right. So that as a benchmark, we should appreciate and acknowledge that. So to move forward, I think there are need, we need to look at design as a solution, engineering as a solution, work innovatively to create products, to create technologies and other materials that can help us produce uh, products faster. Now the second point actually relates to affordable housing. I am on the technology submission of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Poverty Alleviation, where we're looking at strictly what is defined under the PMAY, affordable housing, 30 square meters. A lot of uh, work is happening there, which can actually be used as reverse innovation in affordable sector as other developers call okay, them. Okay, that's interesting so I think, to know. Uh, you can look at a number of technologies that are being tested in various labs, on various project sites, on various demonstration projects, because there's no other way but to use innovation, design and technology uh, in those 20 million houses that have to be delivered Absolutely. in the next seven uh, years. Talan, but to, so, so do you think affordable housing and the need to get that process absolutely right would probably drive a lot more technology innovation in this country? Absolutely, and I think that is doing that. So, I mean, I'm privy to some information where, where um, you know, reinforcements with concrete blocks have been used to build structures about ground plus seven. That saves you about 200 rupees a square foot or so. I'm privy to information where uh, proprietary technologies are being used, like Coffer. Coffer India has some, some technologies to offer. Now, these are ideas uh, that are new, that are slightly out of the box, which don't always require a huge capital expenditure. In fact, uh, reinforcing concrete blocks is the dumbest of the ideas because you can do it with low skills, but yet have a cost advantage over there. So, so we really need to look at everything contextually uh, 
uh, we need to uh, look at it in terms of what uh, what are the available technology skill uh, skills that we have to achieve those uh, housing goals you know i really went through a long list of essentials this foundation this piling this shuttering this reinforcement and i read up all of this this is also you know uh, the fire safety aspect of it, the seismic safety aspect of it, so really we get, get deeper and deeper into the subject. There's so much which can be done, but I'm going to wrap out here. And I'm hoping that at least on the safety issues, for example, fire I know is something which really lacks in most Indian projects and buildings. Seismic and earthquake, I believe we've still got to a very, very decent uh, area. I'm just hoping that together we... we create more awareness and developers here both have been very honest in accepting that look we are still far away from global standards but we, we, we are hoping to get there. I'll have to wrap out here. Thank you gentlemen Anil Sani, Sanjay Kumar, Kalan Matu and Mohit Arora. Thanks very much and we'll keep you know following up with regular stories. You do a new technology, call us and our reporter will be there. I'm going to wrap out here. Very interesting discussions today on both green buildings in India. How does the real, est real estate industry adopt green practices and take up sustainable as not just a lip service but a cause? And of course, basic construction technology to make sure that we get our flats and apartments that we paid for in time. Thanks for joining me and goodbye.